Hi there, Dave Mason here again. Now, tomorrow, June 7th, Apple kick off their annual WWDC, Worldwide Developers Conference. They have a keynote at 10 a.m. Pacific time in the US at 6 p.m. here in Ireland, where I am. And typically, this is where we get all the information about Apple's software updates for the year ahead. So I just thought I would do a quick video to talk through maybe hopes and expectations for what we're going to see. The conference goes on all week with the keynote, as I say, tomorrow. So hardware first I will touch on, but I don't expect much or we generally don't get much hardware. Some years there is some, some years there is none at all. What the rumours are saying is most likely from a hardware point of view is new MacBook Pros, or maybe a 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. They could be really cool, of course, with the new Apple Silicon, be that M1, M1, X, M2 chips, whatever they choose to call them. And that would be really interesting to see. I personally am on a MacBook Air, an Intel one. I'm not currently in the market for a new laptop, but I can imagine being tempted by that 14 inch one in particular. So that will be definitely interesting to see. Will we get any other hardware? It seems unlikely. There are people hoping maybe for an iMac a larger iMac, but that it sounds like it'll be more likely later in the year. The focus really for this week is going to be on software as it generally is, where we'll see new versions of iOS, iPadOS, watchOS, and tvOS, and of course macOS announced. And they generally will come out in and around September, maybe October of this year, and be in beta over the summer. So, what are, we, what are we hoping to see? I suppose from an accessibility point of view, Apple have actually, unusually this year on Global Accessibility Awareness Day on the 20th of May, they pre-announced some new accessibility features, which I thought was a really interesting thing that they did. Some cool features there for us in the visual impairment community. There was information about some new screen and image recognition improvements. So that's always welcome improvements in that space. So it'll be really interested to see what that looks like later this year. They also announced a new live sign for people with hearing impairments um, when they're shopping, for example, in an Apple store to have a live sign, which I think is an amazing thing to do as well. So that would be really cool. And something that I really like the look of is assistive touch on the Apple Watch, mainly aimed at people with physical and motor impairments, but of course, many people might find it useful. This will allow things like clenching your fist or pinching and things like that. And somehow the accelerometer in the watch can pick up what gesture you're doing with your hand. So if you're not able to use the watch with touch screen in the same way as many other people can, this may make the watch really accessible to you. Um, and I can see, depending on how well it works and how sensitive or not sensitive it is, um, maybe answering a phone call with a couple of clenches of the fist or something, maybe that would work well. So definitely interested to see what those are like. I think we'll be finding out a bit more about those later in the week. They more than likely won't be mentioned or get much talk in the keynote itself tomorrow. Um, I wouldn't expect, but hopefully we'll find out more about those features later in the week. Now for the keynote itself and the main operating systems, what is it we're expecting and hoping to see both from you know a main stream point of view but also of course from that uh, low vision and blind um, point of view start with the ios i guess like ios 14 it made a big leap forward last year in for me anyway because you know i've dabbled with android over the years here and there i've been an ios user for 11 plus years, but I've dabbled with Android. And the one thing that I always liked on Android was the home screens and the app drawer, how easy it is to just have the apps I want quick access to on my home screen and widgets. And then for any other app, I can just swipe up and get the app drawer. And I have a full A to Z list of my apps. I love that. Last year, I iOS made a big leap forward, like I say, in iOS 14 where you no longer have to have all of your apps on your home screen. If you don't want to, you can just have the ones you want on your home screen and then you can swipe across and get to an app library. They also, of course, brought widgets. I'll come back to those in a minute. So the app library 
it's good. It's definitely a step in the right direction. But I still, I'm not crazy about how it actually works. A, getting to it, if you still have maybe two or three pages of apps, I have two myself, then apps and widgets, then I've kind of a couple of swipes to get across to the app library. But then they have these categories, so they like show you a little block of social apps and a little block of games and so on. And I don't find it categorizes them very well. I don't find those categories very useful. If I want to find an app, it's it's a lot of work, it's more work than it's than I'd like really to find it within those categories personally. The recent apps, recently downloaded apps is quite useful, but aside from that, those categories haven't proved too useful to me, to be perfectly honest. What I would really like is just a nice simple A to Z list or grid of all of the apps on the iPhone, and that to be the app library. Um, you can't get that, of course. You either swipe down with three fingers as a voiceover user on the screen and you'll get that A to Z list, or you double tap in the text field and there's also a search. So you can do that, but it just feels a bit more effort than it is on Android to get still to that nice A to Z list. So I am hoping they will improve that a little bit, but uh, we'll see what, uh, what they do, if anything, on that front. Uh, widgets, of course, came last year as well. I Again, they're pretty good. I don't have many complaints about widgets, really. I think maybe if, if they made them interactive, because at the moment, if you tap anything on a widget, it opens up the app. Um, so there's maybe some widgets you may want. Just imagine like a now playing, where you just want to hit the play pause or the rewind 30 seconds without opening the app. Something like those kind of things might be useful, and there are people definitely asking for that. Maybe smaller widgets would be nice. So at the moment, the smallest widget you can have is a two by two grid, two, so the size of two apps across and two apps down. Maybe a two by one kind of would be useful as well. That just gives you a smaller piece of information without taking up a huge block of space on your home screen. But we'll, uh, we'll see, we'll see what they do. From a voiceover point of view, I don't have a huge amount of personal requests missing. We'll see what they come up with. Like as I say, any improvements to things like screen recognition and um, image recognition are always welcome to see those continuing to develop. Um, particularly image recognition can be a bit hit and miss at the moment. So if they can, and especially if the, you know, reading text on images and that kind of thing, it isn't very reliable. So I'd like definitely to see that improve. Um, I'm not a big braille user myself, but I know a lot of, Braille users, you know, with their Braille displays, have found Apple iOS has been a bit... They, I think they've bared the brunt, I suppose, of the bad bugs in recent years. It seems like a lot of the worst bugs that VoiceOver has had in recent years have been for people using Braille. And I really, really hope that, that we don't see that again with iOS 15. I really hope that they clear up historical bugs and that Braille users really get a good experience in iOS 15. I really think that's important this time. Um, I suppose then onto iPad OS. This is where I think they're going to put the most focus. I think iPad is going to be the big story of, of WWDC this year. I hope it is because it does still kind of feel like a giant iPhone in some ways and you know in terms of doing any productivity or multitasking I, I think the, the various gestures and stuff are very awkward and um, yeah, they're not, it's not that easy to use in that sense. Also, as a keyboard user, there's some things you can do, but there's some things you can't do. And I would like to see that kind of keyboard user uh, interface much, much improved as well, um, so that you can really almost use it as a, as a laptop as well as, as a touchscreen device. Um, you know, some examples around that would be Things like moving from, again, this is as a voiceover user specifically, moving from different sections. Because on the Mac, you've got where you interact, the voiceover will interact with different sections, and that's how you kind of get around different panels on the screen. iPad OS doesn't have this. So if you've got a panel on the left with a list, and you've got a main panel on the right, and you've got a couple of toolbars up in the top and the bottom, getting to those different sections of the screen can be quite difficult with this and unreliable uh, currently with a keyboard. So I really hope that they can let you get around those different containers more easily without having to use the rotor, go around to containers and then go up to him. It's too slow. I need just a quick way of 
flipping around the different sections, you know, with Windows, you hit the F6 key, each typically with JAWS, or sometimes Control F6. Um, and like I say, on Mac, you've got the interactive method, interaction method, and an interaction. So I need, we need something like that, I think, on, uh, on, iOS, on iPad OS and indeed the iOS with a keyboard, particularly iPad OS, where you're more likely, well, personally, I'm more likely to use the keyboard and uh, to try and use for productivity. Another thing in the productivity space would be like things like Excel, Microsoft Excel, uh, Apple's Numbers or Google Sheets, so spreadsheet apps. Like at the moment, you can't even use those apps essentially with VoiceOver because VoiceOver doesn't allow you to just move around the grid with the arrow keys and type into the cell when you get there like it would on a PC or on a Mac. It's it's just crazy. It's just 2021 that we can't properly use a spreadsheet app as a voiceover user, even with a keyboard, is, is pretty horrendous. I really hope they uh, they sort that out. There's also some bugs around, you know, when you're in text editing doc, you know, documents, kind of apps like Word, Pages, or even sometimes in Mail, in terms of, um, you know, going up and down through the lines of text, it's kind of unreliable sometimes. So I really hope they kind of sort that kind of stuff out. I don't know if I have expectations. Unfortunately that they will. I think it's going to be quite mainstream focused maybe in terms of improving multi multitasking and stuff like that. I don't expect that they're going to fix that kind of voiceover interaction with things like spreadsheets and Word documents. I hope they do. I really think it's not good enough at this point that we can't use an Excel sheet and that kind of thing. So that's my, that's my big ask that they fix those kind of things and make it a bit easier. And, you know, the, to get around the, the device with voiceover using a keyboard as well. They have improved that over the years. It's good in many ways, but there's definitely a few gaps I'd like them to, uh, to close there. Because I, I do love the iPad. It's really responsive. I'm using the iPad Air 4th Gen, which came out last year with the Magic Keyboard. And it's so responsive. It's, you know, really nice to use. You can use a bit of keyboard, a bit of touch. It works really well. But there's just these big blockers, these big barriers that I really want them to uh, to close and to fix. Uh, so that'd be the iPad, I think. Like I say, that could be the big story of the week. But we have those other OS's. Watch, I don't. I mean, we talked about that assistive touch feature. I think that'll be big in the accessibility space. But aside from that, I don't have a huge amount that I'm looking for from my watch i you know all i use it i don't use my watch that extensively beyond things like uh you know fitness tracking um uh, which works pretty well as is and maybe complications some of them could be improved a little bit but often that's down to the third party as well so um yeah not a huge amount to ask for from uh from me on the watch point of view i think things like even again bugs are unreliability maybe to be fixed. So for example, the tap to time, when you double tap or triple tap the face to get the time tapped to you on your wrist, uh, things like that could be a bit more reliable in terms of actually working. But aside from that, I haven't got a huge amount of asks on that. Similarly, uh, tvOS, I'm not crazy about the two different navigation styles they have for voiceover, but in terms of overall features, um, yeah, not a huge amount to, what, what else can you do? All you, you know, if, all, if all you use it for, like me, is you know Netflix and Apple TV Plus and things like that, just watching TV, that it's, it's doing the job for me pretty much. I don't, uh, there's not a huge amount of extra I need from it. I don't use it for gaming or anything. Um, I like the look of the new remote control they brought out, um, although I, don't, I didn't get one, at least not yet, but uh, it's a bit expensive for just a remote control, but who knows, I might get it at some point. But in terms of actually using the device, um, not a huge amount. And it will it'll be interesting to see if they do come up with any uh, any new features. Um, actually, one thing that just occurs to me now, though, here in Ireland, Apple still haven't brought Siri to the Apple TV, it seems. So please, God, Apple, <laughs> bring us Siri. We have it on every other device. Give us Siri. And I stand to be corrected if that has since been fixed. But last time I looked, at least, Siri was still not available in Ireland on the Apple TV as it is on any other device, which is really, really strange. So uh, please, please sort that out. <laughs> um, and then the 
the other one, I suppose, HomePod is likely to get some updates again. That's not in Ireland yet anyway, so I've never actually used one. Um, but, you know, who knows? I, there might be a minor update. There has been rumours in the last week or so of something called Home OS, something that leaked out. Or, um, so we'll see if that is something. Is it just something new name for what for the software they have on HomePod? Or is there something more around, you know, more devices coming from Apple in the home space. So that'll be interesting definitely to see. And then the bit the other one of course is Mac, Mac OS, I guess it'll be Mac OS 12. Um and yeah, what will what will that bring to the table? I think for again as a voiceover user, most people what they want at this point, it's a very mature OS. What we're really looking for is for voiceover to work better, to be more responsive in places. Although again, I'm on Intel, maybe the M1 is, is better in that respect, but um, there's just bugs around the system and limitations that it has that, um, that could be better. So in terms of actual features, I'm not quite sure what, um, again, what else we need the Mac to bring. You know, even their, their standard apps are really good, like Mail and so on, I think is a, is a brilliant app. So um, yeah, voiceover kind of bug improvements almost is is um, is what we want and efficiency in voiceover um i guess it'll be interesting it'll be interesting to see what happens with the catalyst apps and on the m1 the actual native iphone and ipad apps working on the mac and how well they work i think as a voiceover user it's it's not great right now um you, you know using those apps on the mac so definitely want to see i suppose maybe it's similar to talking about using the iPad with the keyboard, using those kind of apps with the keyboard on your Mac as a voiceover user, certainly, um, I think it's something, it's still a work in progress. It's that whole project is still quite, quite new if you think about it. So hopefully we'll see further improvements uh, on that and hopefully no wild kind of new bugs. Like last year they brought out the new notification center and widgets and the widgets just weren't really accessible at all with voiceover. And I just think that's, that kind of thing was really disappointing because we've come to expect things to be accessible from Apple out the, bo out of the box and when a new OS comes out with it and they talk about a major new feature in the OS uh, like those widgets and then they, you know, you couldn't add and remove them easily with voiceover. That was really disappointing. So I hope we just don't see anything retrograde like that. Um, but really that's, that's it. Um, Really looking forward to, to the event on Monday and to more news coming out during the week about all the new software coming out for from Apple this uh, this week and this year. Um, of course, the we expect to get you know beta versions for developers um, pretty much straight away this week, and probably public beta programs for iPhone, iPad. I think they do one for Watch and Mac as well probably in July and then we're looking probably September, October for the various public actual releases of that software. So it'll be an interesting summer. I'll be playing with the betas myself over the summer and reporting bugs and all the rest of it. So looking forward to seeing what's new. Um, lovely to, love to hear what, uh, what anyone else thinks in the comments about what they hope to see uh, this week or after the event, if they're if they're impressed, if they think anything is missing, or yeah, what they what they think of WWDC. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.